Hey, Dr. Sia with you. So how can iodine be helpful for your thyroid? Well, you need some. It's not a bad thing. And I would really discourage thinking about anything we find in the body or in foods as good or bad. And also discourage thinking about more and less. So those are four letter words now, <laughs> more and less. Because if you need less of something, less than what? You know, the ultimate extension would be none. You know, less and less and less and less. So it's always a specific amount that's important. And the same thing about more. If you need more of something, well, what do you mean? Like, let's say you need more vegetables in your diet. More? Many of us get less than is ideal, but should we only eat vegetables? If we always need more, then in theory, we should eat nothing else. And which ones? So yeah, we want to think more specific and more about amounts. And we've seen that there are times in which iodine deficiencies created big problems for people. In the past, this was shown up by the case of goiter first off. So some have just obvious enlargements of their neck. And that occurs in areas that tend to run lower than about 30 micrograms long term. They'll have this enlargement occur. We also see cretinism, and that's where people do not develop properly. They don't grow to a proper adult stature. Their brains never learn to function the way they should. And that occurs in areas that are probably lower than 20 micrograms per day over longer periods of time. <clears throat> we also see that there can be just a total shutdown of the thyroid and a severe lack of thyroid hormone that leads to mixed edema coma. And that occurs at somewhere less than 10 to 15 micrograms per day long term. And these are serious conditions. Around the 1800s, they started realizing that these things had a common thread. And they also saw that in adults, there could be something kind of like cretinism that would emerge. And surgeons saw that those who had their thyroids removed would have similar things show up if they weren't treated in some way. So it all came together because too little was a harmful problem. And then we see that iodine fortification by and large was a win and reversed a lot of these conditions. Uh, the US fortified with iodine rates of goiter went down tenfold. Interesting thing, the United Kingdom didn't fortify with iodine and they saw goiter rates go down over a similar time frame. And now we know that in both the US and the UK, along with fortifying iodine in our salt, there was a fortification of iodine in dairy foods. So not the foods that were given, but the foods that cows are given. So cow feed, a lot of the additives had iodine added in to prevent goiter in cattle. And that caused much higher amounts of iodine to show up in dairy foods. And interestingly enough, this issue of reversing goiter was a very positive change. It was a good thing. But we didn't even fortify salt across the board in the US. Um, many states fought it. Many areas did not do it. There never was a federal mandate and there never was a consistent action that took place. But after the years of fortification in salt and fortification to cow feed, which was more consistent, the rates of thyroid disease went up 52 fold over many years. So goiter went away, but many other problems did emerge. So iodine deficiency, how big of a problem is this globally? Well, in 1990, very recently, there was only four countries that were iodine sufficient, that were not lacking in iodine at some level. By 2013, there are now only nine countries that are not iodine sufficient. And now many countries are listed as being in a state of iodine excess. So between 1990 and 2013, the global intake of iodine has just completely done a 180. And the US is now in the category where overall we're considered to be in a rate of excess that endangers thyroid function. So action steps, you know, daily intakes to prevent thyroid disease, 50 to 200 micrograms seems to be about safest. Pregnant and lactating women may need an extra 90 micrograms on top of that. Those who have thyroid disease and wish to improve their function are better off being somewhere below 100 micrograms. And as adults who develop thyroid disease, the risk for onset of goiter is not there from iodine deficiency. That can occur for other reasons, but not from lack of iodine. So the goiter issues are not, not concerns for us as adults. And that level of being under 100 micrograms has no other adverse effects, if anything, only positive effects. So that's why iodine is not good or bad. It's just specific, and there's amounts that can be useful. All right, take great care. We'll talk in really soon. Bye-bye.